We've never had perfect justice in the United States, but we've done a pretty good job and we've improved uh, this country expanding the rights of many individuals throughout the past several decades and several generations. Now, we strive to be a more perfect system, but it's kind of impossible to be perfect. Now, when you compare our justice system to many other countries around the world, we got it pretty good. But there are those that are hell bent on destroying that system so that they can gain power, tell you what to do, and you will cower before them. They want to take away your ability to call the police. Why? So that woke mobs can enforce whatever insane policies or rules they want. They also want to take away your guns at the same time so that those who are willing to break the law and will attack you can get away with doing whatever they want. You know, watching Fox News is really interesting. Seeing Greg Gutfeld and, you know, several other personalities, as well as Sean Hannity, cheer on the guilty verdict of Derek Chauvin is interesting because I don't know who on the right actually supported that. I can't imagine you're watching Sean Hannity being like, I agree, Chauvin should be in prison. Most conservatives on Twitter are saying the opposite. Hey, but mainstream media going to mainstream media. Conservatives mostly not going to conserve much, I guess. And the Republican Party ain't going to fight for you. What did they offer up? We're going to wag our finger at Maxine Waters. <laughs> Fat load of good that did. We're watching the end of justice, not just because of Derek Chauvin, but because of a lot of other things. And, and, and that's why I point out justice has never been perfect in this country. There's been issues of racism. There's been a lack of police accountability. Now what we're getting is the pendulum swinging hard in the direction, and that is still not justice. Derek Chauvin, maybe, should have been convicted on manslaughter charges. Murder, I don't see how you justify. In fact, if the system itself is telling an individual to enforce the law in a certain way, I don't see how he got convicted of anything. But perhaps the jury was just scared. To be fair, as I stated in my previous video, maybe the jury just felt this was a felony. This was, this was an assault on George Floyd. Chauvin should not have taken the actions he did. They could have arrested him. They didn't need to do this. Whatever the, po the point may be, the Chauvin case isn't the most egregious thing so far. I think the threats against the trial are the most are the substantially more egregious things. Like I'll put it this way. Whether or not the jury was motivated by threats, we don't necessarily know, but it may be the case. That's why the threats from people like Maxine Water and the rioters is the more serious issue at hand. Of course, Derek Chauvin now goes to prison, and it may be because of this. We're also looking at another, another story about Kyle Rittenhouse. His is the next trial that is coming up, and this young man will likely rot in prison for the rest of his life. A Virginia police officer was fired after donating to Kenosha shooter Kyle Rittenhouse's legal defense fund. I have had several witnesses of that event on Timcast IRL, my podcast show. They have explained in great detail exactly what happened. In fact, I think the witness testimony, Richie McGinnis, who actually provided aid to the man who was shot by Rittenhouse, is the third largest video on the Timcast IRL channel. Something like, I think, 1.2 million views. I listened to what these people had to say, and I drew my conclusions. Kyle Rittenhouse was acting in self-defense. Kyle Rittenhouse did not carry a gun across state lines. Kyle Rittenhouse was asked to defend properties because riots were going on and people were hurting other people. In the video, there's a flaming dumpster. According to several witnesses, I think four witnesses that we've interviewed, the, the, the extremists were trying to push a flaming dumpster into a gas station. Kyle Rittenhouse and his crew were putting out these fires, and so they attacked Kyle, who ran away. It was only after someone else fired first did he turn and fire at his pursuers, and then he tried to flee to the police. Most of you probably know the story. A police officer who donated $25 has lost his job. This, my friends, is the death of justice. Everyone deserves due process. Everyone. Everyone. Especially Kyle Rittenhouse. But now if you try to donate to him, they will take your job away. Well, I'll tell you at a certain point, there's only so much I can say about defending conservatives and calling out this extremism. We know it's happening. We know how bad it's getting. But what are conservatives for the most part doing? Well, many of them are speaking up and speaking out. That's a good thing. Many of them are ignoring it and just carrying on. Many regular people are accepting of this. So what do you do? Honestly, I don't know exactly what you should do. I'll tell you what I did. I got away from the cities. I'm not going to keep putting money into this system or supporting a place that is that is has a majority of, of stupid people voting for stupid things. They want to vote for gun control and then abolish the police. I ain't going to live there. OK, they're like, abolish the police and also take guns away from everyone. All right. You live that way. At a certain point, I recognize when I'm not wanted and 
I'm going to leave and go somewhere else. It's almost like the Ayn Rand stuff about, you know, who is John Galt? Eventually, the wealthy, talented industrialists are like, I'm going to leave and go do my own thing somewhere else. And they do. And so maybe that's the best you can do. This is a crazy story. You can't even donate to Kyle Rittenhouse for his defense, for his legal defense. He's been convicted of nothing. But in the court of public opinion, it doesn't matter. They, the, in a press conference from the police department, they basically say that even donating is, or I, sh- I should phrase, this, phrase it this way. They basically say Rittenhouse is guilty and that's all that matters. The dude's innocent until proven guilty. Apparently cops don't care anymore. Insider reports. A Norfolk, Virginia police officer has been fired for donating to the legal defense of Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17-year-old accused of fatally shooting two anti-racism protesters last year. Let me stop right there. You all know the story. You see how Insider frames things. It's a manipulation. The 17-year-old's accused of fatally shooting two rioters last year. Rittenhouse is accused of killing two rioters and injuring a third rioter after he opened fire at a riot uh, against police. Uh, against the police uh, in Wisconsin. Lieutenant William Kelly has been relieved of duty, a Tuesday press release from the city of Norfolk said. Insider was unable to reach Kelly for comment Wednesday morning. News of Kelly's firing comes four days after The Guardian published a list of public employees who donated to various funds on a Christian crowdfunding website called Give, Send, Go, which was the target of a data breach. Kelly was among four public employees who donated to Rittenhouse's legal defense on the website, The Guardian reported. The report said that Kelly donated $25 anonymously to the legal defense, but he was identified because he used his official email address. Well, you should not have done that. You can donate if you want to, but, you know, use a private email. He left a comment on the fund along with his donation. God bless. Thank you for your coverage. Keep your head up. You've done nothing wrong. Every rank and file police officer supports you. Don't be discouraged by actions of the political class of law enforcement uh, leadership, The Guardian reported. Before his firing, Kelly was the executive officer of internal affairs in in the Norfolk Police Department. The Guardian reported he was initially placed on administrative leave when the report was published last week. The city's press release said Norfolk City Manager Chip Filer said on Tuesday that after an investigation, he and police chief Larry Boone concluded that Lieutenant Kelly's actions are in violation of city and department policies. Quote, His egregious comments erode the trust between the Norfolk Police Department and those they are sworn to serve. The city of Norfolk has a standard of behavior for all employees, and we will hold staff accountable. Okay, I have zero sympathy for any cop right now, period. Sorry, guys. There are a lot of law enforcement people who hit me up. Now, I can respect you on an individual level. But what I mean to say is, if you remain a police officer right now, sorry, I I have no sympathy, I have no empathy, and I have very little respect. Respect to me is standing up for yourselves and being dignified, saying I would rather live, I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. And they've got all of you dropping to your knees for the mob. And you would prefer to be on your knees than so be it. If you're a cop right now in this country and you want to drop to your knees, so be it. Do it. I don't care. I just won't defend you because you know what happens. You can't even give 25 bucks to Kyle Rittenhouse without getting fired. Okay. That's the, that's, that's the job you chose. The politics you choose to live under. Your dignity has been stripped from you and you want to be the puppet sacrificial lamb for the state. Fine. I don't care. I don't live in the city anymore. I got away from all that. I'm relying on myself and it's been great. You go out, you breathe the fresh air, lower cost of living. We've got a sheriff's department quite some ways away and I'm responsible for myself and I'm happy with that. Maybe the defund the police people have a point. You know, maybe these cities, it it doesn't matter what happens after the fact. If they want these things, then so be it. Now, look, I understand most people probably don't want to defund the police at all. Most people don't want to abolish the police. I think the polls show us that. But if those people aren't going to vote to support the police, sorry, the political class has stripped the police of any and all dignity. They have gotten you to to drop to your knees while they all point and laugh. And they'll lock you up in a moment's notice. So why do it? A lot of the leftists are like, you know, Tim, Tim is, is, is all salty and crying, you know, saying the police should resign. 
No, I, I, I agree at this point. I don't, I don't care what you think about what happens after the police are abolished or whatever. I just think if you want to be a spineless uh, individual with no dignity, go ahead and do it. If you would like to retain your dignity and stand up defiantly, you will tell these departments, screw off. Let me tell you something. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Will any one of these cops in Norfolk walk out in support of their coworker? No, they won't do it. They're not going to do it. He said, the rank and file police support you, Kyle. He must have been wrong because I don't see any of these cops getting up and being like, no way. If you do this, I walk. I've had so many jobs in my life where I have said, you do this and I walk. And they call my bluff and I walk. I had one job, fast food restaurant, and I had a manager disrespecting me. And I was 16 years old. This this was my first job. And so I basically was like, I'm one of the best employees here. I do my job. I'm on time and I don't complain. If you got a problem with that, I can leave. And this manager had the nerve to say, yeah, you know, some of these other employees, they do a good job. Not like you, though. Took my apron off, threw it at him and said, have a nice day. I get a call from the general. This was, a, this, was a, uh, this was an assistant manager. I get a call from the general manager and I'm just like, they're like, please, please, please come back. And I'm like, nah, ain't playing that game. Oh, they called me like three times. Like, please, we need you to work here. No, no, it's too bad. It's too bad. I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. These cops in Norfolk, they would rather drop to their knees and beg, please, we're such pathetic, spineless losers. We won't support any of our coworkers. We like what people are doing. Whatever, dude. I know a lot of people get mad at me because it's a little harsh to say. And they're like, these people have families, man. They need jobs and whatever. It's like, dude, if you would sacrifice your coworkers to an angry mob to protect yourself, well, I'm not going to defend you because I believe in heroes who would risk everything to protect the ones they actually care about. And maybe they say my family's more important than my coworker. If you would all just stand up and say, OK, we are going to strike. We are going to say no. We are going to defend our coworker, you would win. But they don't do that. So, okay. Then what do you want from me? I- I'm sorry. Let me, let me just rephrase this. If you won't defend yourselves, what am I supposed to do? God helps those who help themselves. They say, quote, a police department cannot do its job when the, poli- when the public loses trust with those whose duty is to serve and protect them. We do not want perceptions of any individual officer to undermine the relations between the Norfolk Police Department and the community. The press release said Kelly will have the opportunity to appeal his firing. Insider has asked the city and police department whether Kelly had announced intentions to appeal, but they did not immediately respond on Wednesday morning. Kelly should not have been fired. He should be allowed to donate. And I I, I think right now the appropriate action for every single officer in this department is to donate to Kyle Rittenhouse, assuming they support him. I'm just sick of people who are unwilling to fight for themselves. I know not everybody is a leader, but at a certain point, personal responsibility plays a role. This is what I never liked about unions when I was in, you know, I've been in three. I like the idea of collective bargaining. I don't like the idea of unions. You know why? Collective bargaining is when every employee stands up, they raise their fist in unison and say, this is what we demand. A union is when you say, I don't want to do anything. You do it for me. And then what happens is you get corrupt individuals on the board of these unions and they don't help you and you get exploited. No, you must stand up. You cannot pass the buck. You cannot ignore your responsibilities. You don't get to just sit there watching your department burn to the ground, watching your coworkers get fired for doing nothing wrong and expect you to skirt by as the mob comes for you next. I have more respect for this officer who donated than to the officers who are saying nothing as he's being punished for doing what he believes is the right thing. So my respect to Kelly, he should appeal his firing. He should get his job back. They say three other public employees donated to Rittenhouse. Good for them. The three other public servants who donated were, I'm not going to read all the names of these individuals, a paramedic in West Valley City, and uh, we have uh, someone who works in Huntsville, Alabama an engineer in Lawrence Livermore University. The West Valley Fire City Department told ABC4 in a statement that it's conducting an investigation into Shepard's donation, but said such a donation would be representative of a personal of personal actions, not those of West Valley City. The fire department did not immediately respond to insider's request for further comment on Wednesday. The director of communications for the city of Huntsville also did not immediately respond to insider's request for comment on Keith Silver's donation. 
Linda Seaver, the director of public affairs at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, told The Guardian that this individual had made an honest mistake, had never intended to use his lab email on the matter. Insider has contacted Seaver for further information. Some also donated to the officer who shot Jacob Blake. You know what, man? If these people, that, uh, these, these public servants, if, if all of these cops stood up for themselves and for their co-workers, Kyle Rittenhouse might actually get a fair trial. But it goes beyond just Rittenhouse. 100% goes beyond Rittenhouse. It goes, or I'm sorry, it goes beyond the donation from these departments. It goes to the trial of Rittenhouse. Do you think that Kyle Rittenhouse can get a fair trial now? The jurors are going to be crying. They're going to, I have to imagine, the, the only people who want to be jurors in these cases want a guilty verdict. Have you thought about that? Derek Chauvin's found guilty on all counts. Could it be that the people who went to serve on the jury knew what this was and wanted to find him guilty? And the people who didn't were too scared. The political zealots were probably super excited. Ooh, I'm going to make this guy rot and burn retribution. I'm so excited. And everyone else is spineless. Where's anybody standing up and defending the rule of law and our Bill of Rights? I mean, they exist, you know, on the Internet. And there are people who listen. Unfortunately for y'all, let me just tell you, sorry, whatever this side is, and it's not all conservatives, too many spineless losers. I'm sorry, that's the fact. I'm not saying you are a spineless loser. I'm saying there are a lot. I get messages from celebrities and they're like, I agree with everything you say, but I'm too scared to say it. I'm like, then you deserve what comes next, okay? If you will not stand up and take action to solve your own problems, then don't expect me to come and bail you out. You've been warned. In all of these cities, you've been warned. You've been told time and time again by the conservatives you follow and by individuals like myself to get out of the cities. Many of you have. I've received tons of emails from people saying, thank you for the advice. It was the right advice. I'm, I'm way happier now. Many of you are saying, no, we're not going to leave. We're going we're gonna to stay and keep fighting. The time to stay and keep fighting, for the most part, was before the elections. But I do respect that. If you want to stay and fight, I do respect that 100%. That means the people at these departments need to stay and fight, figuratively. That means these officers need to stand up collectively and say no to this. Are they going to do it? I don't think so. And there lies the problem. The center uh, has folded. You've, you're, you're no longer holding the line. You stood around and you saw all of these people at your side and you believed they would charge into battle with you. And when you did, they stood there and they said, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to do this. I guess it's easier. I guess it's easier just to say nothing and be a cog in the machine. That's fine. Do what you want. My point is, you know, you know that meme where death is knocking on everyone's door and it's going one door at a time? You think that the reaper is going to pass your door by? You think that you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to fart in your office and they're going to be like, we don't care about that. No, they're going to be like, that was an offensive gesture. It was offensive to women. And they're going to make up some dumb, ridiculous reason. You think I'm joking. But look how insane all of this is getting. Sooner or later, it will be you. And you will have to reap what you have sown. The media is pushing the psychosis, fear mongering and insanity. Bill Maher can point out the COVID stuff from the mainstream media and how it's making Democrats go insane, but he can't recognize how all the rest of the news he's consuming is insanity. Personal responsibility. Right now, Chauvin is receiving very serious threats. Riots are still expected. Portland still rioted because capitulating to the extremists doesn't satiate them. The guilty verdict of Derek Chauvin did not prove justice is possible. Barack Obama said it's not justice. AOC said it's not justice. It only proves that you admitted you were wrong and that they should keep fighting. When will people learn? Giving the mob what they want doesn't make them stop. It proves them right. Chauvin getting convicted did not result in people saying, yay, we did it. Everyone go home now. It resulted in them saying, I can't believe how long it took us to get justice. We all knew what had happened. This system is broken and we must keep rioting. You thought giving them what they wanted would satiate them. 
but it proves them right and it throws fuel on the fire. Next up, we have four officers, or is it three more, I think, who will be facing uh, aiding and abetting manslaughter charges coming up in August, which means more riots should they be acquitted. But they won't be because justice is dead. So what can you do? Move to a red state. Move uh, move to a red state. And I, I get a lot of people in the rural area saying, no, don't tell city folk to come here. No, 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 no. Move to a red state and don't vote for this stuff anymore. Don't vote for the Democrats anymore. You go to a red state, you, might, you have a fighting chance to defend yourself, stand your ground laws, the right to keep and bear arms. You stay in a blue state. Don't come crying to me. How can I, after a year of the worst riots we've ever we've seen in generations or decades, how am I supposed to be like, oh, no, the poor people who already knew and took no responsibility for their safety? You know how bad the cities are going to get. You know what is likely to happen in the next several months. We already have another story about a cop shooting a, 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 a black individual. The left is already lying about it, saying she was unarmed. Even though in the video you can see she's about to stab someone. At what point do you just give them what they want? This is what I, I can't stand, man. Let the urban centers have what they asked for. If you're not going to stand up for your coworkers, then what are you doing? Are you really just there for a paycheck? That's that sickens me. You know, all these people are like, Tim, there are a lot of cops who are, are staying because they want to protect the community. The community hates you. Your own bosses hate you. I don't I don't I don't get it. No, I think it's mostly a paycheck. If your leaders say screw off, if the voters say screw off and there are some pe- people saying please stay and you choose to be the sacrificial lamb for the state, I mean, do, do whatever you want. You don't got You don't got to take it from me. You do whatever you want. But all this cop did was donate to Rittenhouse. And did anybody stand up to defend him? It seems like nobody did. Okay, then why should I defend you if you won't even defend your coworkers or yourself? I'll see you on the next segment coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out.